and House Republicans are expected to pass a border security bill today as the pandemic-era Title 42 immigration policy expires. The CBS News congressional correspondent Nicole Killian is following this story and has more from Capitol Hill. So, Nicole, you know, just walk us through what's in this bill and could it become law? Well, basically, this is a pretty sweeping package by House Republicans that contain a lot of their priorities, things that they would like to see when it comes to the border and also addressing uh, the issue of Title 42, which is in large part why they are bringing it up this week. It would tighten asylum restrictions, for instance, by restoring the Remain in Mexico policy. It would also restore funding and construction of the border wall and include more technology upgrades along the border, beef up of funding and staffing uh, along the border with a border patrol uh, by providing a number of law enforcement uh, safety grants. Uh, you know, this bill did reach a little bit of a hiccup yesterday uh, with Republicans who were concerned about some uh, components of the legislation, particularly a provision dealing with the E-Verify program, which verifies a person's uh, citizenship status. And so uh, in terms of that provision, uh, some lawmakers, particularly from more rural areas, were concerned that it could make it harder, for instance, uh, for uh, some workers to be processed. So uh, there was some adjustment as far as that provision was concerned. There was also some concern around a language involving uh, the issue of cartels. Uh, so most of that has now been worked out and we expect the bill to move forward on the floor later today. Uh, still will be a very close margin as many of these uh, bills are, but we expect this to likely pass with Republican support. Uh, unclear if any Democrats will support it, but it seems unlikely. Uh, Nicole, as you well aware, uh, Speaker Kevin McCarthy said he would not support George Santos's re-election bid as he faces federal fraud and money laundering charges. Um, why has it taken the Speaker until now to speak out so strongly against Santos? And why aren't Republicans? I, I know you know you need two-thirds members of Congress to remove a congressman, but if there was ever a case for at least considering it, isn't this one of those? Well, keep in mind in terms of George Santos, I mean, he is not the first lawmaker to be indicted or charged. And so that is the argument uh, that the speaker has been making that, you know, other lawmakers have been able to continue to carry out their duties as they remain under investigation and that everyone should be uh, presumed innocent until proven guilty. So, so that being said, uh, you know, they are trying to give Santos uh, some space here, even though when you look at the charges, when you look at the accusations against him uh, that, you know, whether it's uh, charges of fraud, charges of money laundering, charges of lying to the House of Representatives, uh, you know, that is something that uh, we are hearing some Republicans uh, still continue to call for his resignation. But again, as far as leadership, uh, they are kind of giving him that space in that lane to let this legal process play out. But it is notable uh, that the speaker would go so far as to say that he is not supporting him uh, for re-election. Of course, we know Santos announced his re-election bid just a couple of weeks ago, and that certainly that is a seat uh, that Republicans would like to preserve, which begs the question who uh, the speaker may support going forward. Um, Democratic Senator Dianne Feinstein is back after a prolonged medical absence. Uh, as you know, she was facing a lot of pressure to either come back or maybe step away. She missed a lot of votes. Um, how's her return going so far and how's it going to impact the Senate? Well, she returned yesterday. She said she is feeling much better, as you probably saw from some of the videos and pictures. Uh, she arrived in a wheelchair, and her office says that is in part because she is still suffering from vision and balance issues following her shingles diagnosis that she is still recovering. And so because of that, she may maintain a lighter schedule at the advice of her doctors. But uh, certainly she is eager to get back to work. We expect her at a meeting today with the Senate Judiciary Committee, which, of course, uh, she has played a key role on that panel and certainly took some heat uh, during her absence uh, for uh, being away, even though it was for medical reasons. But certainly some progressive Democrats were concerned that it was impacting the pace of processing judicial nominations. And she made clear that her absence has not been holding up that process. Uh, and that is in part uh, why she is eager to return not only to help on that front, but also uh, to address this impending debt limit <laughs> crisis as uh, lawmakers here on Capitol Hill continue to negotiate on on the issue. All right, Nicole Killian for us on the Hill. Nicole, as always, we thank you, friend. Appreciate it. You bet.